Hey guys, Mr. Catlin here with your video lesson for the day. We have, I got the wrong thing pulled up there. Let me pull up today's actual lesson. There it is. Uh, lesson 4.8, we're finding the original 100% in a question, or perhaps the number after that original number has been changed by an increase or a decrease. So we're looking, we call this percentage of change, and this is really what all week's been leading up to. And I'm going to use number, double number lines and tables to kind of put everything together that we've talked about this week. And also over here, I'm going to have a shortcut. So double number line, table, and a shortcut for each problem. Let's jump into these word problems. The gas tank in mom's car holds 12 gallons of gas. Dad's truck holds 75% more gas than mom's car. So how much gas does dad's truck hold? Well... The first thing you have to be able to do in these problems is you have to do, um, you have to figure out what your 100% number is, okay? Your 100% number is the original or the one that you're comparing to uh, originally from the beginning. So in this case, mom's car gallons of gas is the original number because we're comparing dad's truck to that, the original one. So 100% in this problem is 12 gallons of gas, all right? That's... That's the full amount of gas that her tank will hold, all right? So we know that 100% for mom's car is 12. Comparing dad's truck to that, we know that it's 75% more. So this is not 75%. This is 75% more than what mom's hold. Mom's hold this at 100. So if we broke this up into quarters, which is a good choice for 75%, yes, this would be 75%. But that would be 25% less than what mom has. We want 75% more. So think of that as this is being 200%. And this would be 150. Let me cut these into quarters. 25, 50. This would be 175. This is really what we're concerned about. This is how much dad's truck is going to hold. Because it's going to hold more than 12. We don't want to go back to 75, right? We want to go up, and every time that we go somewhere on this particular number line, because we have cut it up into quarters, 12 divided into quarters is skip counting by threes. Three, six, nine. This one would be 15. This would be 18. And our answer would be 21. Because if dad's was 100% more, that would be doubling it at 24. That makes sense also. So that's one way to use the double number line to answer a question like this. 75% more than 100 is 175. You also could have used the table. If 100% is 12, then 175% would be uh, 21. And we know that because the constant of proportionality to get from 100 to 12, when you divide those two, you get uh, 0 0.12 because 12 divided by 100 is 12 hundredths. So you could have used the table in that manner. You could have used the double number line the way that I showed. And as of yesterday, you should have had a shortcut. 75% more is 175% of 12. So you could, the shortcut over here, our shortcut math could have been, you could have just done 1.75 multiplied by 12. Watch, if you take 1.75, I think I don't have it anymore. I think it was on here. There it is. Okay. So if you go to your, your calculator and you do 1.75 times 12, you'll notice that that will also give you the correct answer. So uh, 1.75 times 12 and 21. It works. All right. So there's another way that you can do that. Let's go to the second question. All right. Moving on along. All right, so number two says, last year our school had 580 students enrolled, and this year we only have 522. Uh, I think I might have tweaked the numbers a little bit, but this is pretty accurate. We did have a drop in enrollment, mostly because of COVID. Uh, what percentage has the number of students decreased from last year to this year? So our first job here is to find out, okay, uh, which of these numbers is the original 100%? In a this year, last year kind of problem, the last year number is always going to be your 100%, okay? Because that's the original. That's where it was in the beginning, and it's changed since then. So this is 580. It matches up with 100, all right? 
And 522, this would be like 250. So 522 is actually really close. It's probably right about in this area, 522. Our job in this particular case is to find out how much did they go down? Uh, how much did it decrease from here to here? What percentage is this, first of all? And then how much did it go down? So down by question mark. How much did we decrease from the 100? All right, so one way to think about this is with the table is like, well, I know that 100% is 580, right? And so I need to find this mystery percent by using that constant with the number 522, right? So you could set that up over here. And when you compare these two, if you do 500 divided by 100, you notice that the constant of proportionality to get from one side to the other, 500, that divided by that is times by 5.8. So to come back, we would divide 522 by 5.8. So let's do that. 522 divided by 5.8. So 5, let me clear this. 522, too many twos, divided by 5.8. And that comes out to be 90, which is, it makes a lot of sense as far as what it looks like on ours. I mean, if this was 90, right, that looks like it's 10% lower than what that was. And so that means this would be 10%, or I'm sorry, 90%, which tells me that it was a 10% drop, a 10% decrease coming from the 100, right? Because 10 uh, taken away from 100 is 90. So that makes sense. A shortcut, okay? A way you could have gotten this answer much faster, okay? A shortcut for this would have been to take the two numbers that are involved and divide them. You know, when you divide them, when you divide 522 divided by 580, you get 0.90. And then you can interpret this as 90%, which is 10% less than 100, right? So sometimes the shortcut is not as clear cut as maybe the double number line or the table. In this case, sometimes the shortcut is not easy. Uh, you might have thought 580 divided by 522. That could have got you in the wrong boat. So, you know, it doesn't hurt to draw the double number line just to make sure that you're on track or do the table. You know, whatever works best for you. There's lots of different options here. All right, let's look at the last problem that we have involved here. So after a 40% discount, a T-shirt cost $18. And we want to know what the cost of the T-shirt was before the discount even started. We haven't done one like this where we don't know the before price. We don't know what that was when it cost 100% of its value. We just know that 40% has been taken off, so we know that we've dropped down 40% less, right? Which, by the way, would land us at a 60%, right? 60%. And we know that once it's made that 40% drop, that the t-shirt cost was is now $18, right? We know that. Um, and if we're going down by 40, a good skip count number for us here would have been 20s on the percentages, right? 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. And we can make those matching ones along here, correct? So if you break the number 18 up into one, two, three equal spots, 18 divided by three, you can skip count up here by sixes. And that would give us 24. And our mystery number is, voila, 30. All right, the double number line makes that one super easy. Double number line is not always really easy, but that one, it made it really, really simple. We could have used the table. We could have said that 100% is unknown to us at the beginning. And we knew that 60%, okay, because of 40% discount, we know that that 60% is 18. And then we could have found the constant of proportionality between these two guys. And uh, this would have been, what, 6 goes into that 3 tenths. So you could have multiplied this by 0 0.3. And that would have got you over there, would have gotten you the 30, right? You could have done it that way. A shortcut to this problem, 
Okay, a way that you could have done this without the table, without the double number line, is you could have done, um, you know that 0.60 is your percentage, right? Because it's a 40% discount. So you know that 0 0.60 is going to be involved. But if you multiply it by the number that you have, which was 18, it wouldn't make it go up like it should, right? This is actually a problem where you can divide by your multiplier that you find. And if you do 18 divided by 0 0.6, watch what happens on the calculator when you do that. Okay, let me clear this and do 18 divided by your 0 0.6. You get the 30. So another way to get there, there's three different options. you got the double number line. You've got the table. You've got these shortcuts of using these multiplying and dividing with your percent uh, numbers in decimal form. Okay? And I, I, if that's struggling with you, you can think of the percent equation, right? The part, which is you don't know what you're paying, is multiplied by the percent times 100. So you know you got to divide there to go back and find the hole that you had in the first place. So that's just a shortcut method that you could take to get that answer. So use those double number lines. Draw those tables. Make those... Uh, I think that the double number line is great just to get your bearings on is the number going to be bigger or is it going to be smaller. And then you can decide whether you're going to divide or whether you're going to multiply by your 0 0.6 based on the fact that it's a 40% discount. And 100 minus 40 is 60%. The same reason I got 60 there, right? So good luck on these today. If you need extra help, email me. Stick around. Go to the Zooms. I'll be doing some more examples. See you guys.